Where were you shot? Where, which part of the body? Where did the bullets come? Oh, I got shot in my hand. My thumb came out of my hand. My face. F shot in the face? Yeah. And where did that come out? Not the two. Wow. Oh, my goodness. There's a hole there. Yeah. I don't kinda... know why I'm surprised the bullet went through there, but it's, <laughs> it's alarming. Yeah. It kind of changed my voice, too. And this is the voice that sells 8 million records, so I think everything happens for a reason. What Today, a... I'm going to tell you a story that sounds too good to be true, that you might think is just pure fiction. However, this is no make-believe. This is the story of why Curtis James Jackson was shot in both legs, chest, hip, arm, jaw, and hand. But long before 50 Cent was shot, he was just another young man hustling on the streets of South Jamaica, Queens. When the crack epidemic began in the 1980s, 50 was just a young boy. Enterprising dealers went further, developing a form of cocaine that was even cheaper and packed a lot more punch. This is it. The drug so powerful it will empty the money from your pockets, make you sell the watch off your wrist, the clothes off your back. Or kill your mother. Yep, that's what we're seeing. On the streets of New York, it's called crack, and the deals go down quickly. By the age of 12, the young 50 Cent had already started dealing drugs and hustling in the street. And so how old were you when you got involved in selling drugs yourself? Around 12. 12 years old, man. Yeah. During this period, Fiddy's priorities wasn't hip-hop. Instead, he was just hustling in the streets for his next meal. Fiddy Cent had no good role models around him because his mom died when he was only 8 years old. And he never met his father. Instead, the men he looked up to were the various drug dealers in South Jamaica. The men who ran the corners and were getting bread. They were the only semblance of success that 50 Cent had around him. One of these drug dealers was the man known as Kenneth McGriff, who was popularly known as Supreme. Supreme was a drug kingpin in South Jamaica, and one of the most feared names on the streets. 50 Cent idolized Supreme. Supreme was one of those OGs that young men in the hood hoped to get a chance to work with. And it's easy to see why. Supreme was seen as the man who had the blueprint for success. He had a tight-knit crew he called the Supreme Team. Supreme ran his team like a Fortune 500 company. Their product was white powder. The customer base was in South Jamaica. The Supreme Team had somewhat of a 24-hour delivery service. At their peak, the Supreme Team was allegedly making over $200,000 per day. Although Supreme was no Don Pablo or El Chapo, he still ran a drug dealing team that was the envy of many. Under Supreme's leadership, the gang grew to have hundreds of members. Everyone knew not to mess with the Supreme team because some of the members of this gang were actual murderers. Some of the leaders of the Supreme team were Bimmy, Puerto Rican Righteous, Baby Wise, Gerald Miller, aka Prince, who's actually Supreme's cousin, and Black Just. Black Just and 50 Cent had a very special relationship. Some might even say Black Just was the elder brother that 50 Cent never had. He was the man who took 50 under his wings in the streets. Black Just bought 50 Cent his first motorcycle and paid for him to go to a gym so that he could be a boxer. And when 50 wasn't sparring in the gym, he was rapping in a friend's basement and using turntables to record his instrumentals. By now, Fiddy was now fully focused on hip-hop. In 1996, one of his friends introduced him to Jam Master J. Jam Master J taught Fiddy how to write hooks, count bars, and structure songs. But it wasn't just Fiddy Sen who was now interested in rap. Supreme was now also interested in hip-hop as well. Supreme was arrested in 1987, and in 1989, he pleaded guilty to controlling a criminal enterprise. He was sentenced to 12 years in prison, but he was released on parole in 1994 after serving about five years of his sentence. When Supreme became a free man, he was released into the golden age of hip-hop. Hip-hop was one of the biggest raves in all of America. Supreme decided not to go back to selling drugs. He saw hip-hop as his chance to reinvent himself and make clean money. Supreme had his eyes set on becoming a hip-hop mogul. 
and he decided to partner with Murder, Inc. Records. In the early 2000s, they were one of the biggest labels in the country. It was the most notorious rap record label of the early 2000s, with a string of chart-topping hits backed by a sound and image that crossed over from the streets to pop culture. Led by hip-hop mastermind and producer, the label was run by Irv Gotti. One of their artists were Black Child, Charlie Baltimore, Ashanti, and of course, Ja Rule. With Supreme, they had protection against their ops. And working with Supreme also improved Murder, Inc.'s street cred. And during this period, Ja Rule was one of the biggest rappers in the country, so Supreme had obviously made the right choice. The label was raking in the Benjamins, and everyone was happy. However, they had hit a snag in 1999. Jaw was robbed of his chain by a man named Troy while shooting a music video. Troy robbed Jaw Rule because Jaw supposedly slept with his wife. Supreme eventually used his connections to get his chain back and once again proved how valuable he was to Murder, Inc. However, after some time, Ja Rule saw Troy talking to 50 Cent in the club. And according to 50 Cent, this was what began their beef. A friend of mine's robbed Ja Rule. And when I'm in the club and I see the nigga, I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, I'm chilling. He see me kicking it with the nigga that robbed him. And he feel like, oh shit, I shouldn't speak to this dude because I know the kid robbed him. But I know this kid, I grew up with him. This made Ja Rule that 50 was in on the plan to rob him. 50 stated, that he was only hanging out with Troy because he was his friend. Now you've got to understand how gutsy it was for Fiddy to go toe to toe with Jaw. Fiddy Cent was just an underground rapper who was signed to Columbia Records. Jaw Rule already had a platinum selling record while Fiddy hadn't even released his debut album yet. Jaw had a major label in the industry behind him, but Fiddy Cent was just a raw gangster rapper who only had his wits fiery persona. Bottom line is, I'm a crook with a deal. If my record don't sell, I'm a robber still. You better recognize, nigga, I'm straight from the street. However, Jaw Rule denies even seeing Fiddy and Troy together. Jaw stated that their beef began because the Murder, Inc. crew gave Fiddy the cold shoulder when he was shooting the video to the song Murder for Life. And this shoot happened after the robbery. We might never know what exactly caused this beef, but one thing you and I know is that Fiddy was never going to let any disrespect slide. But before he did anything about it, he spoke to Supreme about it. However, Supreme allegedly said to him, Yo, leave this little dude alone. You know they pussy, but this is my food. However, the beef only got worse from here. Fiddy Sant called out the entire Murder, Inc. crew, including Irv Gotti. Things turned ugly. So yo, Fiddy, what's the definition of a wankster, man? I mean, what is that? Ja Rule, Irv Gotti. I'll tell you personally, the Murder, Inc., the people that you see, like Irv, Ja, the people that are involved in the business aspect are bitches. Like, these niggas don't got no hood in them. Fiddy wasn't backing down, and neither was Ja. He's nobody. He's... This person, right, this person we're talking about. Biddy and Ja met each other at the Swiss Hotel in Atlanta as they were both booked to perform at the same show. Fiddy's manager, Chaz Williams, encouraged them to talk, try to squash the beef. But rather than settle their differences, this would be the first time the duo will get physical with each other. Discussion would turn into a huge fight. Biddy managed to steal Ja Rule's chain and he wasted no time in letting everyone know about it. He released the diss track, Your Life's on the Line, and in the video, he pulled off one of the most humiliating moves in hip hop history. Fiddy was wearing Jaws chain in the video of the diss track. Murder, I don't believe you, murder. Supreme eventually collected the chain from Fiddy and returned it to Ja Rule, but Fiddy also got a watch in return. But that video was the ultimate disrespect, and it was only to get bloody from here. Ja Rule and Murder, Inc. tried to blackball Fiddy in the industry, and this affected the growth of his career. On March 24, 2000, the beef got physical again. Ja Rule and Fiddy were in the Hit Factory building, but in different rooms. When Ja heard Fiddy was in the Hit Factory studio not far from him, 
He convinced his homies to go and jump him because he couldn't join them as he was on crutches. Fiddy and four other people were involved in a fight with Black Child and other Murder Inc. members. You know what I mean? Beef is when you see a nigga in his fucking studio or wherever and the nigga want to talk and niggas was like, nah, ain't nothing to talk about, right? It's like five of us and five of them and niggas is getting it on and fighting and bonk some way, somehow. The lights got hit, hit off and niggas was getting it on in the dark. Fiddy Scent was stabbed by Black Child, but he managed to survive. Black Child was arrested and the judge issued a restraining order for Fiddy Scent against the members of Murder, Inc. in favor of Fiddy. And this is what started the rumor that Fiddy was a snitch. But what really turned Supreme and the rest of the streets against Fiddy and also put a target on his back was the song Ghetto Koran. On the record Ghetto Koran, Fiddy mentioned the names of all the major drug dealers, hustlers, and gangsters in Queens. So Fiddy was not only attacking his artist, he was also exposing street business to everyone, including the feds. However, Fiddy states that he wasn't trying to snitch on anyone, and he was only trying to show respect to the OGs. But Supreme had enough, and he decided to put an end to his 50 Cent problem. Supreme paid $25,000 for 50 Cent to be killed, and on the 24th of May 2000, 50 had the biggest scare of his life. At around 12 p.m., Fiddy's friend Curtis Brown was waiting for him in front of his grandmother's house. Fiddy sat in the back seat as his friend's girlfriend was also in the car. Fiddy's friend then reminded him to go and get his diamond pendant. On his way back to the car, Fiddy took his gun with him. Fiddy stated that he did notice a car arrive on the block, but he didn't think much of it. But immediately after he entered the car... Right behind me is my grandmother's home. I came out like 12 o'clock in the afternoon, May 24th. She was bent over actually uh, planting flowers in the garden and I walked over here to sit in the actual vehicle that my friend was waiting for me in and the car pulled up on the side of us. A guy got out the passenger seat of that car, came around behind it and shot through the actual car. The bullet tore into his face, his arms, legs, hip and chest. Fiddy had a swollen tongue a broken leg, lost his wisdom tooth, and this is also what led to his slurred voice. He was kept in the hospital for 13 days before he was eventually released. What does it feel like to be shot? Does it, is it a physical feeling? Yeah, it first? doesn't hurt as much as people imagine it hurts because of your adrenaline and how the shock of what's actually going on, it hurts after. Did you feel the, the first one or the ninth one? I don't even know. I didn't know my legs were broke. Fiddy Scent was shot by a man known as Daryl Homo Baum. Baum was a friend, former bodyguard of Mike Tyson. But it wasn't just Fiddy Scent that Supreme tried to kill. He also ordered the shooting of E Money Bags and Big Nose Troy. Supreme was eventually convicted of his crimes in 2001, and he was sentenced to life in prison without parole. But this incident changed Fiddy Sense life forever. Yeah, so when going through that experience, when you get hurt that bad, either your fear consumes you or you become a bit insensitive. At first, he hit rock bottom because he lost his deal with Columbia Records. But after he recovered from his injuries, he got back in the booth and created one of the best mixtapes ever, titled Guess Who's Back. This mixtape somehow found its way to Eminem, Fiddy, got signed to Shady Records, and he hasn't looked back ever since.